Hello everyone. Today we are moving on to momentum and impulse in IB physics. As you have learned the same topic in IGCSC, I assume you already have the fundamental idea about it. So let's jump directly into the data booklet. So on my screen, you can see there are four equations here. So the first thing that I would like to ask you is to think about are these equations being defined or derived? So please put some time on this. Pause the video. We'll discuss this later. A few moments later. Okay, so the first one is P equal to MV, P being the momentum itself, and this is simply by definition, so defined. For the second one, which is F equals to delta P over delta T, you may think that it is derived because uh, probably in IGCSE you are told that hey f equals to ma and so if you change the so-called definition of acceleration as v minus u over t then you can kind of get uh, the mv minus mu which is delta p on the top of the fraction and so you can get uh, f equals to delta p over delta t which is the equation here but then the the thing is, no, actually this is not the way you derive it. Instead, this equation is the definition itself. Okay, I will, I will talk about this by the end of this video. So number three, this one, you may not have seen it before, but then you should know uh, EK, that is kinetic energy, that is the same as what you learned earlier. Uh, it's a very easy derived work that you can do. So uh, the arrival, I'll ask you to do it later. For number four, uh, this obviously is something you can do once you got the second equation. So I would say uh, this is also derived as well. And it's just simply derived from the second equation. So that is how you can define the change of momentum as in impulse. This of course is definition, but then in terms of the equation here, then I would say it's being uh, derived. There's also one more equation that you will use very often, and that is the conservation of momentum. So if you go to the question set booklet and go until page 40, uh, here is the equation for conservation of momentum for two objects. So you can do your uh, derived work here. And also I want you to put down the assumption and also just now that number three equation about the kinetic energy I want you to derive it here as well so pause the video try it yourself and we'll show you how to do it 2000 years later all right for conservation of momentum this equation is actually based on Newton's third law you learned earlier and according to Newton's third law it's talking about uh, there's action and reaction pair for two forces which uh, the two forces will have the same magnitude but opposite direction so let's say if you have uh, F12 which is the force exerting on object 1 by 2 uh, it should be the same magnitude to the force that is exerting on 2 uh, but by 1 but then they are on the different op uh, they are of the opposite direction so I should put a negative here to indicate the opposite direction and so according to uh, F equals to MA, then I can change it to MA for each of them. Uh, this should be 1, this should be 2 for object 1 and 2. Same like what we uh, talked about earlier. A is actually, oh sorry, I forgot the negative here. And so A should be V minus U over T uh, by the definition of acceleration. Uh, so 1 and 1 here. And then on the other side, we still have the negative. Uh, and then acceleration is still the same V minus U over T. So for object 2. Notice that there is still a negative here. So what you have here is um, you should first think about the time is in fact the same. Because think about um, the impact time for two objects when they collide. Uh, they must have the same impact time. For example, if I punch your face, the time that my hand contact your your, your cheek would surely be the same as the time that your cheek uh, touching my hand. So T1 and T2 is technically, practically the same. So we can uh, simply cancel it out mathematically. 
and so once you expand it you get m1 v1 minus m1 u1 equals to negative m2 v2 plus because there's two negative here m2 u2 okay so by this part you already can kind of see uh, is almost done already so you just have to rearrange it then you can get m1 v1 on one side with m2 v2 on the right hand side you can have m1 u1 m2 u2 right which is the equation that uh, we would like you to prove uh, for the assumption obviously because uh, think about what you are based on for this derived work so which is of course Newton's third law at the same time because there's no other force here right there's no something you, you try to add on obviously if you have another force then the whole derived work would collapse so the assumption is actually that there's no external force adding on these two objects the force that we're talking about here one and two is an internal force so any other external force would uh, basically kind of uh, violate this this whole relationship so this is something that you need to pay attention to okay and so for this is much easier so first of all you would uh, remember that you are now trying to prove this so don't try to start with this equation so what you can do is start with other definitions for example kinetic energy like we said is defined as half mv squared and so you also should recall by again by definition that momentum is m times v so what you can do is simply um, multiply this whole thing because you don't want to change the left hand side of the, this equation so mv square you can multiply it with m over m so this is like a maths trick that you usually do um yeah because you can just always times one of anything so m over m is one and so they that basically give you half m square v square over m and pretty much that is the one that you want to prove right now all right so this is how you can get it so we are now at the last part of our video which i i said i want to talk about the uh, f equals to ma so the shocking thing is for you is uh, f equals ma is actually not the definition of newton's second law okay when i learned about this i was shocked as well when i was a student so uh the truth is the definition of uh, newton's second law is saying the net force the capital letter F is still net force uh, is being defined as the change of momentum over the change of time more precisely allow me to talk about a bit of calculus um, which is differentiation uh, more precisely uh, which is instead of using the triangle delta I'll use D all right DP over DT um, then you may say hey what was the difference between this and MA then uh, let me show you something when we talk about momentum uh, it is defined as mass times velocity and so if and only if mass is a constant if this mass is a constant then the whole thing is easy because if you learn calculus differentiation you know if there's a constant here while well, v of course is a function of time then you just have to take it out right so m times dv over dt then this obviously is going to be a so f equals to ma here we go right if only m is a constant however right, this is the most important part uh, that you have to learn and understand in library physics um, if the mass is not constant or we don't know whether the mass is constant because it will always be good to be more general and we, sh we should not make too many assumptions then you have to do something that you learn from maths and that is called the product rule so what it is according to my limited differentiation uh, understanding then what you have to do if m is not constant then you have to do m dv over dt which is the same as what we have just earlier but also there's another part that is v dm 
over dt. So you can see there's one more part here. If mass is not a constant, then dm over dt is not going to be zero. That means this whole green part would not be zero. Uh, and in that case, net force would not be the same as ma simply. So if you want a better definition of net force according to Newton's second law, then you should say it's a change or the rate uh, change of momentum instead of mass times acceleration.